Hello YouTube, this is Frimmel. Let's talk about copper farms in the newest Minecraft version, which is 121.3. And I'm not talking about manually mining copper in trial chambers, because that's not a farm and it's boring and dangerous to some degree. The bad news is that reinforcement farms are probably gone for good in the latest Minecraft version. But the good news is that we still have a few traditional drowned farms that do not use reinforcement mechanics. And I will show you a selection of farms that still work in 121.3 to get copper in this video. So this is a traditional reinforcement based copper farm. The player stands here, hits an armor stand, and the mobs in the middle are hit and call in reinforcements. But unfortunately, the only reason why this still works is because our server is still at 121.1. As soon as we upgrade to 121.3, this farm will be broken. And I don't think it can be salvaged. The math just doesn't add up. Now let's briefly check out why this farm no longer works. If you're not interested in that, skip ahead to the timecode you see on the screen. So previously, both zombies and drowned would spawn zombies as reinforcements. Let's have a look at a slightly different version of this farm. And if we spawn in a few zombies and a few drowned, in 121.1, all reinforcements would be zombies. Drowned, if they are hit, will also spawn reinforcement zombies. But let's go to 121.3 with the same farm and again spawn in a mix of zombies and drowned. Then you see that we get both drowned and zombies as reinforcements because the zombies will call new zombies and the drowned will call new drowned. And the problem with that is that previously we had exponential growth. That means in time we get more and more zombies and more and more drowned. But in the new version we have exponential decay. That means if we time warp that for a bit, we, we will get less and less reinforcements. At first the zombies dry out and then we'll have less and less drowned. And the explanation for this is that a zombie that comes in will be in the kill chamber for about 90 seconds and be hit 40 times. So we had 40 chances to spawn reinforcements. But now half of the reinforcements are only drowned and the drowned that comes in will be there for 45 seconds or half the time. So we have only 20 chances to spawn reinforcements. So first we get less and less zombies and then we get less and less drowned. Adding spawning spaces wouldn't help because this farm is already optimized for spawning spaces. But the bottom line is we no longer have this crazy amount of zombies coming in, getting converted to drowned and dropping copper. And maybe it's for the best, at least on servers. If we go back to 121.1, these reinforcement based farms were terribly laggy. In these farms, each mob that we killed was alive for at least 90 seconds. So the time to kill was very long. And the longer this time is, the more laggy is the farm compared to the output. And with exponential growth, these farms would suck up all of the server performance available. Unless you were careful to build in lag control mechanisms to throttle the farms. I just started the farm and it's already at 24 MSPT and you can watch how the MSPT grows over time until we are at the maximum of 50 MSPT at which time the server starts to self-throttle. I did a few videos how to add lag control to these farms in the past, but this is all now a moot point. These farms are gone. So let's see what else we can do. And the alternative to reinforcements are traditional farms where we spawn drowned, move them to the player and kill them. And this is one such farm. But first I have to mention one of my favorite machines of all time, which is a quarry. If you manage to drive a quarry through a trial chamber, you will get a lot of copper blocks. And there are several good reasons for building a quarry. First, it's really a lot of fun. It's very satisfying to observe the quarry in action. You will get a ton of non-renewable blocks that are a pain in the backside to acquire, like cobbled deep slate, calcite, sand, sandstone, 
even quite a lot of diamonds, redstone and copper. And it's a lot of fun to run the quarry, to build a storage system and to see all of the resources that you can get by running it. A quarry will generate some copper from the ground that you can smelt. My quarry is a really small one, just over 100 blocks wide and still generates about 750 raw copper per ingots per hour. If you can get your quarry to go through most or all of a trial chamber, then you can get quite a lot of resources. So for example here, you get over two shaker boxes of each waxed blocks of copper and waxed oxidized copper with a lot of more blocks. Of course, the work which is a bit annoying in survival is you will have to find and break all of these spawners and all of the immovable blocks. So you need to break all of the chests and all of the dispensers, also all of the vaults, so that your quarry doesn't get stuck. If you haven't built a quarry yet, you can of course try to find an area where the trial chambers line up nicely. So you can use chunk base. So for example, here you have three trial chambers that have roughly the same Z value. So you could build a quarry here and move it here. But if you have built a quarry in an older version, like I did, then you have to be lucky to see a trial chamber generated on the path. But of course the drawback is any copper that you get here, and this is the raw copper, or it will be the copper blocks from a trial chamber. Both are not renewable. So if you want to get a ton of copper, because you maybe want to sell it in a shop, then you'll probably want to go to a renewable source, and that would be a drowned farm. The easiest way, but unfortunately also a rather inefficient way, is to use a traditional trident farm. So this farm is basically a huge water column with soul sand underneath. The drowned will rise. And one easy way to do that is to use scaffolding. So they will shoot through the scaffolding, will be moved to water channel, to a player who's far enough away to not impede any spawns. The player kills the drowned with a looting sword I made a video on this farm a while ago. I will link it in the description. You can basically knock out such a farm in about two hours. It's not very difficult, but the rates aren't terribly good. You see this farm about 300 copper ingots per hour. Now you could build this a bit larger. Typically the mob cap is filled to a third or maybe half of the capacity. So you could push this maybe to 600 to 800 copper ingots per hour. You could push it even more if you use portals to remove the drowned, so you can make the water column even larger because the drowned will be transported faster to the player. And Collier described a farm like that. I will also link it in the description. But still, even if you manage to get, say, a thousand copper ingots per hour, that's not really a lot. And the reason, of course, is that we are limited by the time to kill. It takes a very long time for the drowned to rise to the top to be transported to the player. And the only way to improve this time is to go lower. And that means building the farm in a perimeter. And the much faster alternative is basically what the doctor ordered. I'm talking about a drowned farm, very much like the one that Doc M77 built in Hermitcraft 9. For this, we go deep into a perimeter, in this case with bedrock broken, where we have pools of water on soul sand, shoot the drowned up again, into a water stream and move them into portals. And if we have a really large river biome, then we can build this farm really large. The farm and the world download here does almost 7,000 copper ingots per hour. And the whole contraption runs in just over 10 MSPT. So this is pretty efficient for a copper farm, but the rates really depend on how large a river biome is. We are not up against the mob cap yet, so you could build a farm larger if you have a very large river area. This area here is roughly 70 by 140. So that's already decently large at y equals minus 64. So you will need to break bedrock if you want to go that deep. However, if you build a farm with the same size on top of bedrock, that is five blocks higher without breaking bedrock, your rates drop a bit to roughly 6,000 copper ingots per hour, but that's not too bad. So breaking bedrock will increase the rates by 15% and the farm will be pretty efficient 
regardless of whether you break bedrock or not. However, this is a portal based farm and on the server you do need a second player unless there's no one else in the nether. Because if another player is in the nether and over 128 blocks away all these drowns will despawn immediately. So since we need a second player anyway, we kill the mobs directly in the nether. But I'll show you an alternative for a single player world at the end of the video. So why does this farm have to be this big, so much larger than for example creeper farms? There's two reasons. On one hand, we have only a 1 out of 15 chance to spawn a drowned compared to creepers. So if we want the same rates, we need to build the farm 15 times as large. And on the other hand, it takes a lot longer to get the drowned into the nether. For creepers, we can do something smart, like this setup by methods here, where each creeper that is spawned is sucked immediately into a boat and moved into the portal by these waterlocked stairs. So the creeper will be in the nether only a fraction of a second and then we can kill it within a couple of seconds in the nether. And if we break bedrock, then our roof will just be four blocks over bedrock and we have a very low height map. Very fast and very efficient. But this method doesn't work for drowned unfortunately. Even though most of the drowned are sucked into the boats, you will see that over time these boats get dislodged. It seems as if sometimes the drowned will nudge the boat just a bit to the side before they are caught by it. And the longer the farm runs, the more boats we have out of place the more drowns will just chill out here until they despawn. So this farm loses efficiency over time as more and more boats get displaced. So unfortunately, boats are out. And I tried a few other things, but in the end I couldn't do anything better than water streams. And here we have the problem that I don't know a way how to shield the water streams from the light. So these portals are mid-level and light level of 9. So we'll block quite a few spawning spaces here, which blows up the height map. I'll link a video from Logical Geek Boy and Methods explaining the height map and the spawn algorithm. But basically, we have a lot of blocked spawning spaces here, so we have to make this rather high. And again, it takes quite a while to move the mobs into the portals. So this farm here is very similar to what Doc M built. So do check out his videos and the Hermitcraft world download. It's basically portals, bubble columns, a few separators so that drowned don't get stuck under portals or here in the middle where they can stay here without going left or right. The only redstone in there is a system to light up the area. And again, this is taken from Doc M. So we can hit a node block and this will activate a ton of dispensers dropping lava. We will have lava going down here and lighting up everything, turning off the farm. By the way, I use tinted glass here so that you can see what's going on. All the tinted glass, of course, can be replaced with cheaper building blocks. Just make sure that the light level is zero inside the farm. So either use opaque blocks or perhaps just build a roof over the farm so that the light level is zero inside. My kill chamber is a lot cheaper than Doc M's though, and I think this one will do. I just dropped the mobs on cobwebs and kill them with an armor stand and a looting sweeping edge sword. The drops will just fall through to a slime pusher at the bottom. And this goes into your favorite storage system. The drop shoot is high enough that if no player is there, the drowned will fall through and just die. If we get chicken jockeys in the portal, the chickens will be killed by the pusher here. So this will leave only the ziglin that will despawn eventually. And the slime pusher pushes the drops just here and here of course goes your sorting system. Now there is a snag and that's fairly hard to see in this mess here. Drowned that come out of the portals will pick up tridents and keep them from falling through the cobweb. Somehow a single drowned will cycle through a lot of tridents and after a while if you run this you will have hundreds or even thousands of tridents caught in a cobweb all the time refreshed and not going through. So I built this little contraption here and a bag. So we have an etho clock that fires once every four minutes or so. Once it fires, we will push a couple of blocks in here, like so. For about 20 seconds, the drowned will land on the block on top, be killed there. All of the drops, including the tridents, fall through. 
Then we pull back the blocks and the drops will once again go into the cobwebs and fall through. So this keeps the number of tridents down to a manageable number and saves a lot of lag. Very simple kill chamber, very easy to build. I will include a simple item filter in the world download and of course a crafter to craft the ingots to blocks. If you play single player or if you play on a small server where frequently there are no other players in the nether, then you can use a single player version which just uses a nether bridge like this. So what happens, the mobs will be teleported to the portal in the middle, then they need to be in the nether for 15 seconds and they slowly push each other to the outside portals and these portals lead to the skill chamber where the player stands and kills them. So here we use a bit of water transport and powder snow to kill mobs that fall through if no player is around. Otherwise the kill chamber is identical. So in this case the sorting system would go here. The rates are lower because the mobs coming out of the portal will fill the mob cap. We lose about a third of the drop compared to the two player version and get about 4700 copper ingots per hour. Also the lag is a lot higher because of the many mobs in the nether. So if you have access to an alt account or if you can spawn carpet bots in your single player world, please do use the two player version. So I hope that I gave you a few viable alternatives to farming copper. Obviously it's a lot of work to find a large river biome and build a perimeter, but it's also a fun project. You can build other farms, you can build creeper farms in there, you could build ink farms, you could build a high efficiency slime farm. So just do a perimeter that is large enough. Build all of the farms in a way that you can light them up and turn them off so that you'll run only one and then Bob's your uncle. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you want to see more content like this. Please subscribe so that you don't miss any of my videos and see you next time. Bye bye.